My name is Terry Lynch. I'm with Oregon Ecology. Um, I found myself searching for a passageway one day. And that passageway leads right across the complete section of the Cascades, which I'm sitting in front of at the moment. On top of my feet. I want to make sure that everybody sees the type of things that we find in the process of research for the college. I have located a couple that's sitting here on top of Blind Peak. She's facing south. Hmm, she's facing north. The middle, Cascadia Guides, a Let's production, in conjunction with Alien Strand Films. It was scary myself. You were scary because you saw something yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw a little object hovering. It was quite big actually, and then there was little ones all around it. We saw something silver, and then we quickly ran to the, lo to the logs, and we saw a silver, silver thing, and we saw a man standing next to it. this happened. I'm just uh, skeptical about the abduction part of the story. To that extent, it wasn't like a visceral reality experience. It wasn't like a true memory. And that's what I had trouble with for years and years and years. Certainly, I, I shared the experience with the rest of the guys, and they might take that as remembering a real experience but it's not the encounter is real i know that Welcome to this episode of Alien Strand Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Ledesma, and welcome to today's show. Today, we're going to be talking about bloodlines. So if you listen to our podcast, this is about 25 minutes before this one. I was kind of bringing you guys in on what's about to uh, happen here. So this is going to be a pre-recorded podcast, right? It was on an actual YouTube video. It was live on Facebook. It was live on X. I mean, we were live all over the place. We were live on Quantum Enlightenment, The Hidden Truth About Everything Unusual, Extraterrestrial Strange Happenings Group, YouTube, Twitch, and X. We were live on all those uh, platforms when we did this podcast. Now, it doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, because you're you're hearing uh, the, the 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 past part of it. But I'm just kind of bringing you guys in because I want you to to understand what what uh, uh, Karen Miss Karen Pratt and I were talking about uh, when uh, we were doing the interview with her and the things that were happening now. So. I know that you guys uh, listen to the podcast. We're on 26, 27 platforms all over the world. We're global, man. So you can uh, listen to us everywhere. Uh, you can find it on Alexa, on your iPhone apps. You can find it on Spreaker, Spotify, CastBox. You name it, iHeartRadio. We're everywhere, everywhere. So, um, and, you know, give us a thumbs up. So don't forget to catch our movie, The, the Middle. Check it out. But one reason I'm bringing you guys in is because 
I want you to listen to this podcast. It's a very important one. If you want to watch it, you can watch it on YouTube. Now, don't forget, go to our YouTube channel. It's a brand new YouTube channel that we have. We're trying to pick up subscribers right now. You know, and uh, a lot of these podcasts, we're actually doing audio and video. So we've been doing the, the video first. Then we throw them out on audio, okay? So for the folks that, you know, are like truck drivers or out in the busy uh, blue-collar field, you know, where they don't have time to watch a video, they just, you know, can listen while you drive. You know, it's pretty careful. Be careful on the road if you guys are listening. If you guys like listening to our podcast late at night, hey, man, thank you for that. You know, uh, we, we try to, to to you know, give a lot of insights to, to you guys while you're listening and driving, especially on those long, long trips, even on your long flight. You know, get on the flight. Get on your app, listen to our podcast, and that way you can just kick back, enjoy. You know, if you've got questions, you can always send us uh, some questionnaires to any of our uh, platforms, and we'll uh, answer you as soon as we can, okay? So, you know, this this is the podcast you're about to listen to. Uh, it was with Miss Karen Pratt and myself. It was a great podcast. You know, we uh, we talked about a lot of things that were happening with her there in the UK, okay? So, uh, remember, this is a pre-recorded uh, podcast. Everything that I put on our podcast here and on our video... Uh, you'll see it on the description below. Uh, if you click on the comments or anything below on, on any of the information, you'll see all the links to everything, okay? So just kind of remember that, and uh, let's just go ahead and, and uh, start the, the podcast so you guys can start listening to it and stop listening to me ramble just for a minute because you're going to hear me talk a little bit more when we start up again, okay? So here we go. Uh, this is a pre-recorded. Hope you guys enjoy it. You know, Give us a thumbs up after this podcast You know, if you want to hear more just like this. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Alien Strand Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Desma, and welcome to today's show. Yeah, we made it. It's Friday. Woohoo. So, um, you know, it's it's going to be a really, really good podcast today. You know, uh, I just can't... Uh, contain myself right because i want to make sure that we're we're able to get all the information to you guys and um you know we're, we're live on eight platforms right now so i'm gonna read those out to you we're alien strand podcast we're live we're live on asdp alien strand disclosure project page we're live on quantum enlightenment if you're watching thank you and also we're live on the hidden truth about everything unusual we're live on extraterrestrial strange happenings group we're live on youtube and we're live on twitch Man, we got a whole bunch, right? Why? It's because more, uh, people wanted to see more of this, right? And they wanted to see more, uh, and they wanted to hear more of the information that's happening out there to to folks uh, like Karen, right? But before we, we bring her on, uh, I just want to mention you, to you guys. Don't forget, catch us on uh, Alien Strand there on uh, Patreon. There's You can check it out for free. We have a free, few free episodes. You can just kind of follow us there if you want to. And then we have one that's five bucks a month. There's going to be extra stuff that you don't see on any of these platforms, right? Be sure to check that out. Uh, and, you know, and like, you know, hit us a like and subscribe and all that good stuff that comes along with it, right? So tonight's not upcoming, but it's actually tonight. It's going to be a, a bloodline. This is what we called it with Miss Karen Pratt. All right. Uh, child abductee. Well, the contactee, actually. So because, you know, she had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, contact, you know, as a child with, with, with these extraterrestrials. And she wants to talk about it. We have photos from her. We have videos from her that you guys need to see, man. This is a must. You got to check this out. So if you guys can can see us on your platforms, you can uh, comment, anything like that. I'll throw your, your comments on the screen. You want to ask a question, I'll throw those on there as well. All right. Don't forget, you can catch the middle on Amazon Prime. Go check that out. You know, it's two ninety nine on there. Uh, it's our documentary. So if you type in the middle Cascadia guides, you'll see it, right? If you do the middle, you'll get Malcolm in the middle. Come on. You don't want that. You want to see this one because this is a great teaching tool, right? So we want to make sure that you guys watch this film. And if you do give us a thumbs up, check us out. And if you have a Roku TV, TCL entertainment, they just threw us on there to be TV. Those are for free gonna have some commercials in there but it's okay i mean you can either do amazon prime no commercials 2.99 or commercials for free hey it's a give and take but make sure you give us a thumbs up on on the film because it's getting out to a bunch of countries all over the world we're global man that's why we're called asdp global because our movie our documentary is all over and it's a learning tool you know and it's something that terry found on top of paulina peak so you have to see this it's an amazing geoglyph uh 
8,000 feet above sea level what was uncovered up there, right? So you need to see this film in order to, to know what I'm talking about. Now, don't forget the middle two. We're in production of that. We're, I mean, in the editing stages for episode one. So we're going to get that going. It's going to have three episodes total. And then um, the film will probably come out in November and December. Be looking out for this film on Amazon Prime Video first. And then maybe two months later, it'll start coming out on other channels. All right. So just make sure you catch it there. You know, um, I know you guys are excited as much as I am. You know, um, don't forget. Don't forget. Alien Strand Disclosure Project. You can follow us on X. You can follow us on uh, Facebook. If This is a private group. So if you guys want to join, uh, just type it in, Alien Strand Disclosure Project, you know, and you'll see it there. And uh, go ahead, fill in the questionnaire, fill it all in. Because if you don't, if you just answer, I agree, forget it. You're not going in. So make sure you type it all up, uh, you know, all the questions, answer them, and we'll get you in. If you want to be a learning ufologist or you just want to see how, you know, we're catching these uh, extraterrestrials and crafts and UFOs in the sky, we teach you how to do this on this page. No other page does this but ours. You know why? Because we're global. We're here to help you. We're here to help everybody as well. All right. So, you know, I, I love to talk and I don't know if you know this, but Sometimes I say, you know, you know, <laughs> I've caught myself saying that over and over. I can't help it, man. It's just, it, it's like you, when you go to school, right? And you're in front of your, your teacher, whoever's there, they know everything that, that they're trying to teach you. And they tell you, you know, come on, you know, and that's me. I'm just, I can't help it. It's like a pick or something, but you know what? Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and, and get Miss Carrie. Pratt on Karen Pratt. Um, she's going to tell her story, okay, from the very beginning. And uh, let's just, uh, you, you know, listen to her story. And then uh, we're going to show her videos. We're going to show her photos. Uh, and then, you know, let's, let's, let's go ahead and join and, and uh, hope you guys enjoy this podcast as much as I will. Okay, here we go. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> yes, yes. So I rambled enough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do because I love doing this. You know, I just love doing it. Uh, but uh, so uh, you know, uh, you you reached out to me. Uh, I know you saw uh, the one of the podcasts that we did. Uh, I think with, with uh, who was uh, Ms. Uh, Bodie, right? That you saw that, that one with. Uh, yeah, uh, with Lori. Yeah, Lori Bodie, and then you you kind of said, "Well, you know, I, I you know I want to tell my story as well. You know, I know you've been holding it, and I don't know if you've told many people out there, but today is the day." Today is the day to do it, and then you have a little bit of, of clarity after we do this. So tell us, uh, tell the audience out there from the very beginning, you know, what, uh, how this all started and how it unfolded for you from the very, very beginning. Okay, well, my name's Karen Pratt. I live in the south of England in a little town called Farnham. Um, originally, I was from a, a bigger town in Hazelmere, which was about half an hour away from where I live now. And I suppose really it started from a young age, from about three. I noticed that things were different. Yes, I could see things that other people couldn't see. Um, so it's quite hard to explain at such a young age right. what you're seeing and what's going on. Right, right. Um, but when you try to talk to people about the things that you see, they just can't fathom it if they've never experienced it themselves. Right. Uh, well, especially um, at, a, at a young age like that, right? I mean, you're three years old, right? And and uh, yeah. you're starting to see things that other people can't. Uh, and, of course, you remember these things, right? Yeah. I mean, as a young person, because a lot of people talk about ghosts, I used to think that they were ghosts that I was seeing. Um, you could, like, smell, there's certain smells that you could smell, things that you could see. I could see a lot of sparkles, which right. is what I see when I see them now. Right. Um, but I couldn't explain it from a young age, what was happening to me. Right. Um, so how long did did this last for you as far as like, uh, did you go through a, a period of where it was, it, it happened, you were seeing strange things. Now, now what, what is it exactly you were seeing? Just kind of like uh, ghost images, things like that? Yeah, literally, it was like ghosts. I would see a lot of um, like figures, faces. I would hear... Um, voices, it would almost be like a whisper in the air kind right. of thing going on. But I know that ghosts and aliens are closely linked and um, it does right. make you wonder, doesn't it? What, what's the connection between ghosts and aliens? And I always talk about that because it's like I, I, every person I talk to, 
it's like there's a connection like you like you're talking about tonight you know that that it's a possible you know it, what you're seeing is is it a ghost or is it an extraterrestrial you know what what is exactly are we looking at are in the, are they in the same uh, in the same realm right is that what you're kind yeah. of going through dimensional possibly there you go there you yeah go. so that's um, what i think so and then after the age of three, how did any more like anything uh, come to you in, in, a, in a larger form, anything like that later on? It was more as I got older and into my teens, it was more um, like the kind of gifts that I had. So being able to have premonitions, um, sense of a feeling of right. something, a presence. Um, so that became more in tuned in my kind of later teens. Um, early twenties, and uh, did did you ever like uh, try to figure it out? Like, I mean, why is this happening to me? In a sense, I mean, I often ask the question, try to speak to people. Um, a lot of them said, "Well, it's either ghosts or they just didn't believe me." So you kind of end up not saying anything to anyone and keeping it to yourselves. Right um, now. <laughs> And then through your teenage years, uh, were, was anything strange happening as far as like, were, okay, were you, were you, uh, okay, your premonitions, you were saying you were getting sort of kind of premonitions, right? Like you were, you knew something was going to happen before it happened, yeah. right? Did you think yeah. it was some, some kind of, okay, I'm having deja vu or is it like, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm starting to see this more and more? Well, I often used to get deja vus thinking I've been in this place before, um, and that's when I started reading about reincarnation, you know, is that linked to, to that? Um, with the premonitions, I mean, for example, um, my ex-husband, um, I had a premonition that he was going to be in a car accident. And I told him that morning, I said, don't, whatever you do, don't go in the car. Anyway, he didn't listen to me, got in the car and he was in a six car pile up. Oh, no. A couple of hours later. Thankfully, he was okay. Okay. But okay. it's things like that that I would have quite often as a child. Wow. And, um, and then, just of course, uh, later on when you were married and stuff. So, um, yeah. Now, I know, I know you and I talked a little bit uh, through Instant Messenger, and you were saying that, you know, that possibly you thought that it was uh, what was happening to you was maybe generational like uh in possibly in your bloodline like maybe somebody within uh your your grandparents or anything anybody before you was possibly having the same thing yeah i mean in regards to my family i know my mum had seen a ufo um when she was driving back um from near farnham way um back to hazemare and there was a ufo flying above her car Anyway, she, she tried to speak to my dad about it and he just laughed it off as if it was a joke because it's back in the 70s. It wasn't taken seriously back then. Um, but she she vows that that's what she saw. She saw a craft hovering above her car. Um, and then obviously with my grandparents, um, my nan had the gift of seeing as well. Um, so yeah, I, I honestly think it's linked way back through the bloodline exactly well you know and then uh, you know of course we all saw the the movie uh hero you know uh fire in the sky and you know the what he went through was very traumatic and it, sometimes people get abducted without even knowing it because they they you know they they they, they wipe your mind they, they kind of put you in a paralysis kind of state so what he went through was horrible but you know there's times to the only reason i put this picture up because i wanted to show people that sometimes people do get abducted and they don't know like as far as your grandparents anybody throughout the years and back then they're not going to say anything you know they're not going to they're not going to you know they're not even going to remember even if they have some kind of um uh let's just say memories that come that come back right uh little by little sometimes it does happen to folks that that uh, memories start coming back little by little now I always uh, talked about uh, how uh, a lot of extraterrestrials, when you don't know it as well, they they uh, they take DNA and they uh, they they uh, abduct a lot of females. Now, do you ever think that you were possibly maybe abducted of some sort? I mean, it's a hard one because obviously I don't 
remember if anything did happen, but there are signs would indicate that that's a possibility. Uh, loss of time, marks on the body, things like that that would indicate that that may, might be a possibility that that happened. I mean, obviously, I can't without perhaps hypnosis <laughs> regression to see, you know. And obviously, even if memories come back, right. you know, that, that helps as well. Um, right. But you do, I mean, sometimes I get, with my visions, I get insights where they might show me something um, okay. and things like that. And right. and it's like, but then sometimes you think, well, is that a dream? Is, you know, is that a vision? I mean, is it real? You often question these things that you see. Yeah, but yeah, um, you you kind of think, okay, is my mind playing tricks on me, or am I seeing something that I'm not supposed to be, or or I actually am I seeing something? You know, because uh, um, I always talk about people that uh, mock folks that whoever who saw a ghost or who saw an, an extraterrestrial, and you know, they a lot of people have this this uh, this feeling like if I can't touch it, then it's not real, right? They they have this. You know, in their in their minds, you know, I'm not saying you, but it it, it it's sometimes uh, you try to wrap your mind around what you're looking at, and uh, there could be an extraterrestrial right in front of you taking pictures, photos. People are going to tell you it's not real, you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, after uh, a lot of these things were happening to you, now did you start noticing like extraterrestrial craft up up in the sky, anything like that? I mean, I've I've always noticed when I've looked up in the sky that you know you think that doesn't look like a star; it's not moving like a star it's going from the left then straight up and then turning right you know doing right. maneuvers that you wouldn't normally see i mean i'm always looking at the sky i can see when there's a satellite a meteor shower you know you can tell the difference between what is normally seen in the sky and what is not normal right right especially because the, the maneuvers like the kind of maneuvers that are that are happening up in the sky now you sent me a few pictures, and I'm going to show this right now. Uh, these these are a few that you sent me, uh, and you can just kind of tell me exactly, tell the folks out there exactly what we're looking at. I, I believe you caught these at night. Um, let's go ahead and post those up now. Yes. So the one on the left, um, that was like a purpley orb, um, but that was quite low down. I could see it from my back garden, and it was pulsating. Okay, but obviously on a closer inspection, uh, you can see that that's not a star. <laughs> it's, I don't know what that is. It's <laughs> could be a craft. It looks like a craft, though, doesn't it? Coming out. It does. Uh, of a it ball. Does. Is that the video you sent me of that? Yes, you know the little purple ball um, orb. Okay. Ball okay. okay. So, um, and and how about the one in the right? Are are these these three the same craft? They're just just they're the same craft, but obviously with the filters. So the one on the left is the original, so what it looks like. Okay. And then obviously with the filters, um, I mean, if you can scan in, I don't know if you can zoom in, you can see something within the left side. Um, obviously, when I saw it, I could see what was like red lights, um, and it was large. I mean, on scale, it was probably about 10 miles across. Wow. So it was pretty, pretty huge. Yeah. And, and these are great. Uh, you know, to us, sometimes we think, oh, well, it's a star. You zoomed in too close. But these things were actually like, well, like hovering right there, right? That's right. Yeah. Quite low down as well. Really? But about how low were they from the ground? Oh, I'd probably say less than half a mile up. Which is pretty okay. low for such a large craft. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. the strange thing is that a lot of the things that I see, other people aren't able to see. And I find that a lot with other people that I speak to is that we tend to see things that a lot of people don't. Exactly. Um, and and I talk about that as well to, you know, to uh, everyone, even my guests, because sometimes these crafts or whatever biological entity that's inside of them the pilot that's inside of these things um can actually manifest itself only to you 
right? And that's what that's we're, right, starting, yeah. we're starting to notice that more and more and more every every guest that I get on, you know, they, they, they say the exact same thing. Now, this is how I know that you're not crazy or anything like that because, you know, look, just it's just look what's on screen. You know, you're catching yeah. these actually broken down by Mr. Anibal Quinones Caballero. Uh, he's yeah. our he's our analysis guy. And you met Anibal, right? And he started helping you through this? That's right. A couple of years ago, I met Anibal and he's been helping me all the way through. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Helping each other. I love that guy. He's he's man. He's he's the master of of all. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go ahead and just show that video. I think it's I have it right here. Uh, so of, of what that craft was looking like to you as you're filming it. Here we go. It's, yeah. short. it's a short video. Here we go. See, a lot of people would think that was a star, right? Well, yeah, and and it's not it, you can see something around it kind of going round and round like the the plasma. It looks like plasma, yeah, going yeah. around like that. That is crazy. Um, <laughs> now how, that's the one that was you said a hundred about a hundred yard, a hundred feet, or a mile. Uh, yeah, uh, well, point. that one was probably less than half a mile. That one that was quite quite close, really. It was about. Because I live in terraced houses, it was a couple of rows along and a bit higher up. So it wasn't actually that far away. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and that's what caught, caught your attention was just a blinking light or, or just yeah. a movie? It's like I, I, I sense things before they show up and then I, I start seeing like sparkles in the sky. Um, it's hard to explain, but when I see them, I'm always guaranteed to see a craft, um, uh, alien, or anything anything to do on that side. Wow. When I see the sparkles, I see. Uh, there's a the, user that says, I've seen similar lights here in San Antonio. So, oh, that, I know who that is. That's Ryan Keaton. Uh, a lot of these, oh, you got to remember, it's going to say Facebook user uh, that comes up on screen. But actually, you know, there's a, I think you have to click something if you're being a part of this and it'll show your name somehow. So if you guys are, are doing that, kind of put your name if you can, Ryan or whatever you want to do, uh, just until we get that little figured out. But yeah, I mean, uh, they, they're saying, wow, it's cool. It's weird looking. Uh, you know, uh, Annie Ball's right there. He's, he's talking. He says, uh, also, there's there's other small lights around it that we're not seeing visually, right? And you really, really have to zoom into that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to the unseen. A lot of things that people can't see, we can pick up with the filters. And they're always in our skies, always around us. But most people never see them. Now, talking about the filters, uh, I know you use them as well. Uh, how long did, did you, before you started using filters in order to... I know uh, Ani Ball probably should pointed you the way to that. Did he? Did he? As far as the filters, or you just kind of found it? Somewhere? Yeah, I mean, he helped help me with um, some sites that I can use to to do that. Um, it just takes a lot of practice, and you know, getting used to the filters and knowing what you're looking for, <laughs> looking for the EMF in there. Uh, yes. I like to magnify in as well, so I can get more detail. Yes, and it's like me and Terry Lynch always say something. You, sometimes you can see with a naked eye. It depends. If it's during the day, at night, you're not going to see it unless you use those filters, right? So um, yeah. uh, I'm going to show this other photos that you have as well. So just kind of give us a rundown on, on these photos. Okay, yeah, that one. Um, that At first, it looked like a star, you know, but then obviously on closer inspection, that's not some star, but it could be some anomaly um but it is very unusual in its it appearance is. i mean and it looks like a clear sky like there's a clear sky up there and uh, is this the only thing you were seeing up there during the and that skyline when you took that yes, photo? That, was, that was during the daytime oh wow yeah yeah so the one on the right is the the original right so you can see and then you threw the filters on there now somebody's yeah. asking their uh what kind of filters uh, do you use? On, on uh, Do you use it on your phone? Do you have like an Android or an iPhone? So that way they know. Um, I mean, I've got an Android phone. Um, there's some apps you can download. Um, I tend to go on Google on 
a site called Forensically Beta. That's pretty good. You can magnify, you can use filters, um, you can check to see if a picture's cloned. It's quite useful tool to have. Wow. wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw them on your on your photos. Uh, I cropped them out a little bit to try to get the the photo in just a little bit more. Um, you know, and uh, that it's called forensic. Is that what it, what you said? Forensically beta. You okay. can find it on Google. On Google. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay, that's 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 some great information. You know, for people to uh, are able to catch that. Now, I'm going to show another video real quick. Before we go to a commercial break, all right. So, uh, kind of tell us about this video. You, you, uh, it's it looked like something that was pulsating at at night. It's a it's a night photo, a video. Uh, do you remember what day this was? Or uh, I'll have a look at the video. Well, here here we go. I'm gonna put it on for you. Okay, here we go. Okay, so hold on. I'm gonna check the date on that one. Um, so that was on the 18th of June in 2023. <laughs> so that was outside the front of my house. It was kind of at least probably about three miles away. Um, quite low, though, in the sky, but about three miles away. Um, it looked like a a really bright star. But I don't know. I was getting a feeling that this wasn't a normal star. It's that feeling that you get. Right. Like when you see the sparkles. So obviously when I filmed it and then... I got Annabelle to, to have a look at it right. to zoom and, in. And let me let, let's let's show the the, the analyzed footage of Annie Ball, and then you're gonna be able to see it really good. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna show it right now. Well, so you can tell that there's a a, a a saucer shaped craft there, and there's a sphere. Now, I don't know if you if you've noticed ever noticed this on a lot of old photos, uh, vintage photos of UFOs or UAPs, whatever anybody wants to call them now. Um, that every time you see a a large ship like that, you're always going to see a sphere next to it. Now, this yeah. is how you, this is how you know that it's a it's a real craft you're always going to see this together usually when there's one you know sometimes you'll just you'll think of it as cgi and on a, on a video or anything like that but there's always going to be a sphere next to it and me personally i just think it's some kind of uh uh you know tracking and you know it's it's, it's just checking around it you know just to make sure that that there it, nothing tries to bother the the craft itself that they use it for um yeah and that's exactly what you have in the video. You can actually see it with the uh, analyzation that uh, Anibal got on there. That's amazing. That's right, yeah. And you can see it coming through the hole. It's amazing. It makes you wonder, is it a portal, a wormhole? I mean, what could that possibly be mm -hmm. where it's coming through? Now, it have you have you ever, I, I don't know if how close you are to your neighbors or folks around you. Have you ever asked anyone, hey, man, do you see these things up in the sky? Unfortunately, no, I don't really talk to my neighbors. <laughs> I love neighbors. I don't talk to them. Well, I, I guess it's not like the 1950s, you know, you had to talk to your neighbors, you know, but. Uh, I, I mean, I'm surprised. I am surprised they've never asked me because I'm always out there filming. So <laughs> wondering what I'm doing. I wonder what you're filming, right? They're like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> I have to be careful. <laughs> I know, right? but I mean, it's it's uh, people are saying they're great videos. You know, thank you for the details there about the software. They're they're saying uh, thank you so much for that. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and just break real quick for a thirty second commercial, okay? And then we'll come back in about thirty seconds. Is that all right? Yeah, no worries. Here we go.
All right. Well, that's all my video work. So that's my company. If you guys need anything from me, actually, I got a music video coming out October 1st. So I'm going to be pulling that out pretty soon here on all our platforms. But thank you for that, uh, for sticking around and, and watching that real quick. So let's get back to you, Craig, uh, Karen. So um, now this is the, the good stuff. Now, uh, when you started getting these feelings of possible extraterrestrial entities, right? Uh, did you ever think that you were going to see these things actually visually or uh, through your filters? Uh, were, did you think you were, this was going to happen to um, you? Kind of. It's like a feeling that I kind of know when they're around. And it was like inevitably at some point they're going to show themselves. Right. But obviously seeing them on my footage is a bit of a shocker <laughs> when you're looking yeah, uh, I remember uh, seeing the video that you had posted up on one of the sites, and uh, that's when I got in touch with you actually because I didn't I didn't understand what I was seeing at first, and then when you uh, when you threw out the actual stills and then the uh, analyzation of the stills, uh, and then what Anibal did in the video as well, or did you do that? I don't know if he did or you. Uh, Anibal did the the video, um, and yeah. I. Um on forensically beta did the the stills yeah. so they were magnified in that was a great job on the stills because with those stills i was able to make out exactly what we were looking at now for the people that are intrigued out there that are watching the show tonight thank you for uh, for watching the show tonight you know this is a great show and it's a, very informative now um let's let's show that video right um and this is exactly what you were uh now, now, kind of give us a breakdown on that video of the extraterrestrial in the window. Uh, what were you? What time was this? What, when, when did it happen exactly? Um, uh, so with regards to, oh, I don't know if I've got the date down on that one. Uh, oh yeah, hold on. Uh, I think that's the eighteenth of June, twenty twenty-three. Okay. Um, I was basically looking out my front window because I've, I've got my curtains open at night time. I'm always often looking outside trying to see if I can see any crafts flying by. Um, I was seeing these strange lights dancing around each other, moving from left to right. So obviously it wasn't a plane. It was quite low down. Um, you know, those kind of things catch your eyes. You think, well, is that a drone? What, what's going on here? Um, so I got my camera out, started filming. And obviously looking back on the video, because I always like to look back and see if I can right. see more details, um, that's when I saw the face looking back. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't see it with my eyes, but obviously I knew that it, something was there because I could sense it. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so when I show the video, uh, you guys that are watching in video land right now, uh, audio, you can't see it, but uh, we'll, we'll bring, put the links to it. But anyway, when you're looking at the, at the video, take a look a little bit to the left. Uh, you'll start seeing blinking lights in the very background. It's it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it. Uh, but the actual entity is on the right side of the, of the window. But uh, so here it goes. I'm going to show it to you. This is my life's work too, so you're working for the government? What? Daniel! I'm sorry. We're just going to disappear again, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, you can see it blinking. Uh, um, now, you guys, if it was hard for you to see, now I'm going to show the breakdown of the um, analysis video that uh, the Anibal did. Okay, so take a look at this again through analysis. This is my life's work too, Daniel. So you're working for the government? What? Daniel! I'm sorry. We're just going to disappear again, And you can kind of make that out on the right side. You know, the face is kind of long. It looks elongated, you know, uh, yeah. large head on top. But you couldn't see that with your naked eye, right? No. <laughs> and that's what's scary. <laughs> you can't see it. Wow. Okay. So if you guys were, it was hard for you to, to see. Now, I'm going to show you what she did on, on that Google uh, application. That way you can see exactly what was there. 
Now look at that. You can see the face. You can see the head. <laughs> you can see the face. You can see the head, and it's looking right at you through the window. Um, I'm going to blow that's it up. That's quite haunting window. looking. <laughs> yeah. And that, to, to tell you the truth, that's, that's, that's spooky. That's kind really? of spooky. <laughs> when I saw that, I thought my jaw just dropped. So I was like, oh my God. What is that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's like the, the, the photo on the left. It shows more of the eye, the nose, a kind of a elongated head. Uh, yeah. Kind of looking through the window. The one on the right, it, you can see it a little bit better. And it gives you a little bit more definition in a sense, but uh, kind of Tony. Uh, but I mean, it's uh, when you saw this after you broke it down, um, what were your feelings afterwards? Like after you saw something like that? Kind of in awe, really. I mean, but also it's a little bit scary thinking something like that is watching you and you're not aware of it. It's uh, very disturbing. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, and it is. It can be disturbing. Uh, but when you don't understand what you're seeing and uh, what other people, I mean, after after you posted this, um, um, what was the response that you got from this photo? A lot of people were like, whoa, what is that? <laughs> is that a ghost? Is it an alien? I mean, at first I thought it, it could be a ghost, but then when I kind of looked closer, the head shape is bigger. Right. And it, it is leaning more towards extraterrestrial. It but does. Yeah. It does. Um, to me, I'm going to lean more that way. You know, um, like you said, towards extraterrestrial, only only because of the, the eye. You know, it's huge. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of strange that I mean you're you're filming the the window, right? But you can't yeah. see it. You can't see it with the naked eye. Yeah. And that's the good thing about filters. Now, if anybody's new watching the, today's show, we we always teach about filters. You know, filters is very very important when you're watching uh when things are happening around you because there's things that you can't see with the naked eye, right? This is a great great example of of what you can't see with the naked eye. Uh, and, and it took the filters in order to see this, just like, uh, spirits and ghosts and things like that. Sometimes you, you can see them better when you break them down in this kind of, uh, you know, uh, analysis as well. So, um, did, That's right. have you gotten any more like, uh, attention from that photo or did it just kind of die down a little bit or? Kind of die down, but I mean, just generally now on like Facebook, uh, the whole, um, subjects um on ufos seems to have gone very quiet at the moment um so it's kind of it's frustrating because <laughs> yeah. there's so many people got stories to share but yet no one seems to be you know reporting it they're saying uh people they're out there watching saying wow karen that's a great capture you know and uh you know they're saying the eyes are human looking you know and they're everybody's just great capture um they it's I don't know. I mean, I, when I first saw it, it just blew me away. Now, I talked about the podcast uh, before this, and I said, your video, that video is actually going to be on our movie because uh, I want people to see this, and I want them to see the breakdown of this and how you, how how we can't see things with the naked eye. And and, he, and it needs to be shown because uh, not just here on this platform, on podcasts, but when the movie comes out, it's all over the world in different countries, right? So we get to see it. They get to see it in different places. And, uh, you know, they, they uh, people get to understand exactly what you're going through uh, as, as you know, uh, as a person of, of, as, as I, I say you have a, a gift in a sense to where they're like, okay, they're attracted to you somehow, right? And it's... Yeah. It's a possible bloodline thing, and I'm I'm just thinking it's a possible bloodline. Um, well, see, I'm yeah. I'm negative blood, and um, there's a lot of abductees seem to there's a pattern that negative blood is, you know, majority of the abductees. Um, are you Rh negative? Are you Rh negative? Or yeah, just... Rh negative. Ah, okay. There we go. So there's there's another. You know, uh, you get another notch on that one because you know that's 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 exactly what it is. They they've already put that together. Even Heineck put that together. That you know, uh, if you have Rh negative blood, that you're more prone to be abducted, or you know, or you have a lot of visitations uh, throughout your life. 
Now, mm. it's a possibility that I, I've always said this, you know, as they take this is this is the, the, the schematic of it. You know, they they tend to take more females than males only because of of what their agenda is. And it's to uh, to replicate themselves in a different way. Right. Because they have uh-huh. no they have no organs or no sexual organs. In other words, what I'm trying to say they can't they can't. Uh, you know, duplicate. They can't do anything like that. Only the original ones, and they're old. They're getting old. That's what they say. The the tall grays can yeah. live up, live up, to, live up to six hundred years old, and the wow. small little grays, small little grays, they're just clones. That's all they are. They're just the workers. They're little bees, right? Busy little bees, like they like like they are. Um, but have I mean, other than the now, when you got those uh, those marks on your body, were they any kind of uh, uh, did it have any kind of dimensional shape on them or anything like that? Um, no, I mean, it was two marks. They just suddenly appeared. But it was after I'd had some missing time. Um, so I got Annabelle to check. And uh-huh. obviously you could detect the uh, EMF within uh-huh. the marks I had on my um, on my arm. Yeah, I mean, I've had a few strange things where I've had um, like an energy ball come towards me, um, made all my hair stand up on end. I felt sick, passed out. Um, and I remember I'd lost 45 minutes of time. Um, so there's a lot of things really? like that kind of happens. So, <laughs> I mean, there's no way I can prove it was an abduction or it could be something, an interference in the energy field. You just don't know, but, you know, it's things that I remember and, you know, it's n- not normal things that happen. It's, it's unusual. Right. It's different. Uh, and I know that that bloodline is very difficult. Uh, it's, it's hard on, on, on a female, especially because my, my wife's got at the same blood. She, she has a hard time with it as well. She only had got, she only had to have one child through her lifetime, but only because of it. Uh, and my niece as well. So, and, and it's, it's hard to have that bloodline, but when you're going through things like what you're going through, traumatic, uh, you know, episodes, you know, to where you, you're feeling nauseous, you pass out, you know, um, uh, and then forty-five minutes loss of, of time. Did, how long ago did this happen to you when that when that episode happened? Um, that was last year in the summertime last okay. year. Wow. So yeah, I mean, I I mean, the activity that I've noticed with them has increased in the last two years. Right. So it's almost on a daily basis now that I see things. Okay. Or experience things. Now, uh, I'm going to show another video. I think this is your last video, but I'm going to show this video of, I think you were, you were, uh, you had your phone and you were looking through the TV screen, uh, the, the, the mirrored image on it. Oh, and that's the window. So I was looking through my front window because okay. I was seeing some strange, like, wisp, like a gray mist going back and forth. It was flying back and forth at the window in front right. of the lamppost. Um, so I was filming. It's so you can see the reverse reflection of me right. from the, the film. So I'm, I'm going to show the, uh, the uh, analyzed uh, video of it, and then I'm going to show the photo that came out from it, okay? So here's the analyzed video. <laughs> Now it's kind of hard to tell what you're seeing, but you're seeing actually the shape of her head, and then she's got the camera like this, and and kind of you can see the lamp post outside. Right, and you can see the lamp post. So after you broke broke it down into this this uh, analysis, um, you got a photo. Now, did you did you analyze this photo, or did Anibal analyze it? Uh, Anibal um, analyzed this one because um, he noticed it first. He said, "Does there's something behind you?" Um, but I could feel it. I knew there was something there, but I couldn't see it. <laughs> but I was more distracted because it's what they do. It's like a distraction right. by the mist that was going back and forth in front of the lamppost. It was like an old wisp moving right. back and forth, which obviously is not something you see. <laughs> but, you, but you can only see that through the through the mirrored image of the television or just kind of when you're looking with your naked eye? Um, not with the naked eye, through the um, mirrored image. And as you magnify in 
behind me, that's when you see the, the alien there. And here we go. I'm going to show that photo. So that's behind my left shoulder. So to the right on there. Wow. Look at that. You can see it right there. And then he blew it up there for you on the, uh, on the right side of that uh, the video. So, uh, and that's hard to tell, but I mean, look at the eye. You can see the eye on it and everything. Uh, there's a f- facial feature as well. Um, that's that's just kind of eerie. Uh, did did you get like uh, chills or any? Did you feel any cold air around you? Anything like um, that? Not so much cold air, but I can. It's hard to explain, but I kind of can feel them whenever they're around. It's like um, a, like a heavy feeling, like like um. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like a heavy presence around you, it's, it kind of makes your hair kind of go a bit on end. You know when you've got that feeling like a, in the pit of your stomach. Yeah. But I know there's something there, but I can't always see it. But I know. I mean, I've had other experiences where I've had tapping in the in the bedroom as I was recording the bedroom, where I could hear the tapping. <coughs> I got Annabelle to check it. And on reviewing, um, you can see the sparkles that I normally see with my right. eyes. Right. And um, then you see a face looking back at me. It's almost like the tricksters. And um, right. they're, they're good at hiding and copying and well, mimicking. Uh, Aniba says, uh, one thing that should be known, the energy is reflected on her and her, and on her wherever she goes. And those who have been visited, he goes, but not visited, not visual to the naked eye. I think that's what he's trying to say. So, um, so what he's trying to say is that you're being followed everywhere you go by these things. Yeah, um, I mean, I can go on holiday and I'll see them wherever I go. They're there. They're asking what time did this happen? Um, let me just check my notes. See if I got the timing down for that one. So, um, oh, I haven't got the time down. It was, that one was quite early in the evening. I think it was like five past seven in the evening. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, it looked kind of kind of dark outside when you were kind of, uh, when you moved the camera on the original Yeah. Footage. I'm sorry I didn't get the, the original footage on there, but I was just trying to see which one was best to show because it's kind of hard to tell uh, of what people are looking at out there. Um now, do do you ever think that, you know, I ask this to all my guests, you know, do you ever have that why me moment? Um, I know I did when I was younger. I often ask myself that, but I've always felt like I'm different, like I'm fitted in, you know, that feeling that a lot of people say, oh, I don't feel like I'm from here, you know, is the connection much deeper between me and them and then it kind of poses a lot more questions <laughs> they never stop <laughs> wow um so i guess somebody said uh, what is the face above the light on the lamp post huh i didn't see that oh no did i there must be another face there I, I thought i saw something extra on there but i guess uh, maybe somebody could see see it more than we can um but i mean it, it's Everybody always has that question, you know, a white me or is, has it come to the point in your life to where, okay, let me ask you this. Does it bother you or, or, or is it bothersome? Um, or is it just kind I of like mean, a normal thing? It used to bother me, obviously, because I didn't know what was going on. It freaked me out. Um, and when you're younger, it's, it's a lot more scarier. But as I've got older, you know, it's, I'm, I ask more questions. I mean, I've always felt like I've had a mission in my life that I need to achieve. Um, and it feels like I'm getting there as I'm getting older. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I mean, sometimes I get that dreaded feeling and it doesn't feel comfortable. Um, but mainly I, I just feel in awe about it. It's, it's that wow kind of... Yeah. But for me, I mean, I'd rather be helping other people going through it. Um, 
that's why I'm a member of a lot of the groups on Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm admin on a few okay. groups. And that's exactly what you're doing here today. You're helping a lot of people because a lot of folks that are watching today from all these uh, platforms, eight platforms now, you know, they're watching. They're a lot of them have experienced exactly the same thing that you have, you know, and it's, uh, and it is helping folks because you wanted to tell your story, right? You wanted to yep. get it out there to everybody. And, you know, and then we, we always ask why me and, and, and everything like that. Like, why is this happening to me? Uh, and you said, it's not as bothersome as it used to be. So, I mean, um, wh what is the intention? Do you think as far as like, um, I know some folks are, are, some folks do say, okay, I'm here on a mission. I'm here to tell you guys, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be okay or whatever. But the, is your mission sort of like, is it's, we're kind of mixing in within the, with the spiritual well, see, realm or, or an extraterrestrial realm? Is it I like mean, for me, there's a, there, I believe there's good ones and there's bad ones. And, um, you know, I've, as you can see, I've experienced a lot of different types on a daily basis um, you know they've all got different agendas um, you know different ideas of what they want um, but for me it's more of a development on the spiritual side right. um, finding that what what is the meaning of life and all that kind of stuff right. Right. Uh, so somebody asked uh, so you never fe really felt threatened for your life have you ever felt threatened um there's a few times, um, not so much threatened, but I can feel that I get a feeling in the pit of my stomach that makes me feel sick. Um, and I don't know whether it's part of being an empath. Um, you know, if I can walk into a room, I can sense the different energies. Right. And then you get that um, fight or flight feeling, you know, right. get me out here. I right. don't feel comfortable. Um, right. So I, I get that sometimes, but I've never felt to the point where I'm in fear. To uh, be fair. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been there. I've been there. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm kind of like a, a scaredy cat. Like they say <laughs> when it, when it comes to ghosts, you know, uh, you know, because I don't know, I've been in, a, I've been in a dark room or like in a dark basement and if somebody closes the door, you freak, right? Because it's totally dark. You can't see anything. And the first thing that comes to your mind is I'm just going to touch me on the shoulder. Right. So I'm just going <laughs> to, Back. So I'm just going to push me, you know, because you start thinking about these movies and all this crap, right? But, and it's not crap because it happens for real. It does yeah. happen for real. But it, it's the, the sense of you, you know, you don't know what's happening around you, right? And you're trying to figure out, you know, why or what's going on, you know. Uh, it's the fear of the unknown. I mean, the trouble is with me, I like to run towards danger, which is probably the worst thing <laughs> I should do, really. But, <laughs> but I, I, you know, well, I tend to go towards it. I guess because you have you, in other words, your fear level has diminished as far as what you're seeing, right? Yeah. But I suppose that also comes down to what you believe in, you know, spiritually as well. Um, you know, people have faith, some are spiritualists, you know, all that kind of um, dynamic. So, you know, for me, I, I'm pretty strong about where, what I believe in and right. in the afterlife and things right. like that. So it kind of fills me with confidence. I don't feel the fear uh, where many uh, might feel it. So Paul, he's like one of your neighbors out there from the UK. I say he's a neighbor, but he lives in the UK. UK. He's part of our ASTP. So he's asking, he says, he's just saying, as you get older, you seem to be less bothered by things that would have upset you at an earlier age. So this is Paul. Thank you, Paul, for that. I appreciate that. And, and that's true. That's a true statement, you know, um, of what happens, you know, as you lose your fear later on in life, you know, uh, like, like you said, a fear of the unknown. Somebody said on there, fear of the unknown. And that's exactly what it is you know um and like uh marcia saying here i agree with her uh, i get nauseous and i was afraid until last year uh, with hostile so i guess she's gone through what you're going through as well you know and uh how do you tell folks that's the thing without people telling you or you 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 know you saying okay i'm not crazy here you know uh how how do you tell folks what you're seeing to, let's just say 
a normal family member or anything like that. Has anyone ever asked you about anything that maybe they're experiencing? No, to be fair, <laughs> my, my family don't really talk about, you know, much like that. Um, but, you know, when I'm helping other people, um, I try to I always think knowledge is power. If you've got knowledge, you're going to have less fear. So by helping to explain what's going on with people, um, it tends to take away a lot of the fear. Um, I mean, some people will run for the hills because it's just terrifying, which right. is completely understandable. Right. Um, but, you know, everyone's different. And I, I'm just here to help all those wow. who are going through the same. Yeah. And, and it's and there's there's a lot of you guys out there, you know, that are experiencing. And that's why we have this show, you know, to help people out there, uh, you know, to to uh, to understand what they're seeing or feeling or even, you know, even if you can't see with the naked eye like you, there's a few of them there. You had to take photos and videos. You're thinking, OK, something's there. I know something's there. I have to take a photo and a video, you know, and, and it happens because, like you said, you get the eerie feeling, you get the, the goosebumps, you know, you get all and that. The sparkles. Good yeah, and those sparkles. <laughs> you start seeing the sparkles on the side of your eye or something coming down. You're like, oh, wait a minute. What's there? You know, and you have to. You know, pull out your camera or video, whatever you have, you know, and start recording because and, and that's the I think that's the best thing you can do because it shows folks that out there that, that don't understand um, that you are seen or you and you are experiencing something there. Now, where you live in your home, uh, did you when, before you moved there or, or when you moved there, did you ever have any experiences like that thinking, OK, maybe it's a ghost, maybe somebody that lived here before passed away or I'm, I'm experiencing. Um, I mean, to be fair, I've even in my previous house, um, I moved here to this one about 11 years ago. And um, in the previous house, I could always feel what I thought was an old man. Um because he was always there around under the stairs, which was always creepy. Um, mm. But when I moved to this house that I'm in now, I used to um, see shadows moving up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. And I could and I could hear something mimic family members. So when my kids were at school, I could hear what I thought was my daughter calling me. I could hear her voice. Wow. And I'd come up the stairs and there's nobody here because they're all at school. <laughs> they're not even mm. here. Wow. And then, and then you get them kind of whispering in your ear. It's like, I'll be asleep, and they'd, you'd hear shouting in my ear, and it would wake me up. Wow. You know, things like that. I I get that too. You know, every once in a while, I'll get those dreams that just kind of wake me up. Now, Anibal's asking me. It's very important. Ask Karen about what she saw inside her home, uh, like like a spacecraft that was flying around that uh, were not visible to the naked eye, but you can see. In, uh, he guess could be seen inside her home, like. She was outside. Okay, explain to us what he's saying there. Yeah, so basically I've had this... I don't know whether it's a, a portal or dimensional inside my house. And it's mainly been in my bedroom where when I'm recording, when I'm seeing the sparkles and I'm sensing it, um, on recording I could see an object move across, but it gives you the same energies across that you see outside. Um, but obviously on a, a smaller, smaller size. Right. Right. Um, and it, it's kind of hard to tell, right? I mean, at, at that point, you know, what you're seeing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's hard to tell. I mean, I mean, there's so many different types. You've got you know, your watches, your, your smaller crafts, the dimensional beings, crafts coming in dimensionally. There's so many different aspects and trying to analyze and check these things i mean we're trying to break things down find patterns you know what energy is with what craft or what being you yeah. know we, it's all about gathering the evidence finding you know the patterns in all right. of it right um so i mean uh let me ask you this does are, are, when you experience this, is anybody anybody around you that are experiencing those things too, or only you feel it to where you say, "Okay, I got to record something," and they kind of say, "What are you doing?" You know? Yeah, it, I mean, it's ma mainly me that's experiencing it. I mean, there's all times when family members have felt something, but they just brush it off. You know, that's just right. you know, 
<laughs> Weird energy in the house. <laughs> well, I thought I saw something, or I thought I heard something, you know. But um, I think I'm the only one that seems to be experience experiencing this on on the level that I'm experiencing it. But I honestly yeah. think it's down to the connection. It's the, you know, there's a connection that goes back through, like you said, through the bloodline. Right. You know. It's almost like certain people are chosen for a certain reason. I mean, I don't know what that reason is. You know, it could be for, you know, hybrids, you know, all sorts of reasons, you know, that people speculate. But Did you, did you ever hear any stories about the, your history past, about your grandparents, great-grandparents, or anybody on any side of the, the bloodline that had experienced some, like, crazy stuff or, or you know, uh, just have... The uh, the paranormal, more paranormal around them. Or yeah, just... I mean, I mean, I remember my nan used to see ghosts. You know, like me, she was very in tune. Um, I, I do remember when she was in hospital, and you know, the end of life stages. Um, she knew what time they were coming. She said, "I know what time they're coming and what day." And she would often say she'd hear small children running around. She said, "Oh." Make sure the children are quiet. <laughs> there's no children in here, none. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of people say that small greys are like small children. I mean, could that be what she was saying? Exactly. I mean, I mean, and it's a possibility or it's, or it's children, you know, spirits of children, you know, uh, and, and we, we, like I said, we talked about it here. We talked about it before that we think that these two entities are in the same dimension. They have to be uh, yeah. in order to, because it's hard to say that it's the same thing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I, we can't say, okay, it's the spirit is turning into this alien and this alien is building this UFO and this UFO we're seeing land on the ground. It's making marks. You know, people are going into these crafts. They're being experimented on, you know, and, and they, they take them, they bring them back. Some people don't come back, you know, a ghost is not going to do that. It might harm you, right? It might scratch you or whatever. It'll throw yeah. a piece of paper on the floor or glass. But this is what, what separates this from extraterrestrial and uh, and, a, and a spirit of some sort. You know, even it, like demonic as well. You know, if it was... But I think, it, you know what I think? The people who are connected with them seem to be also connected with spirits that they are in tune with both sides both worlds or parallel worlds or dimensions however you you, know, you want to call it right. it's all it's linked in that way that they might be on different planes on right. different dimensions but right. it's people it can be well you can travel through both you know through different kind of if you think there's lots of layers you know ghosts can be seen through the layers through the veil if you want to put it that way I've always talked about too it's like are we some kind of antenna transmitter of some sort right there's people that are special right that they can actually transmit more than somebody else your aura your energy of what of who you are right maybe a part of your mind has actually opened up a little bit more and your aura is a lot stronger you know maybe you're a strong person like you know strong-minded strong-willed and these things you know can actually uh they can you know uh you know it's just like an, an antenna of, of yeah a they 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 go right towards you because it's like oh wait a minute out of all these people when they're growing through it's that person right there because you're you have the brightest aura or the, the best energy or the best frequency let's just put it that way right um do you think that maybe that's how it kind of it could be yeah i've often said that i feel like i'm i'm an antenna I'm picking up. It's like a radio. I'm picking up on on certain wavelengths. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true, you know, until you change to FM. Once you go to FM, it's just totally different. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's crazy, though, that just to even 
think like that or have conversations like that. And people just don't understand that people like yourself and myself and other folks that I know, a lot of people out there go reach out to me and they have these experiences, right? And and when I talk to them and I ask them questions, they're, they're, they're like, yes, yes, exactly. That's that's what I'm going through. And, and it's because I've learned to familiarize myself with everything that's going in their lives because it's ha- a lot of things has happened to me as well. I'm not just... A person that I'll talk to, saying like that, you know, I go out there, I I study u- ufology as well. I help break things down. I I do use my you know my ghost meters and all kinds of stuff, and you know I look for uh, energies, EMFs. So I, I'm not just a person that that just doing this for the heck of it. I'm doing it because I love what I do and I love uh, trying to help people uh, go through this right and help them and help yeah. them to help others right. That's what we're trying to do. It's like a conflict of interest because I'm like got a scientific mind. I want to seek the truth. Um, I question everything, you know. But yet, then I've got this spiritual side that's saying, "Hey, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not crazy, <laughs> but you are crazy." <laughs> that's exactly. That's exactly what it is. You know. And you're like, I'm confused here, man. What am I supposed to do? You know, it's like, and it's it's exactly what you're feeling, right? I mean, we yeah. all feel that way sometimes. It's like, you know, is this like go to the dark side or go to the light or whatever? You know? <laughs> what what is what's happening here? You know, and we don't know, you know. But until you start experiencing these things, you know, then you start breaking it down. Now, I'm going to ask you this real quick. Did when when these things started happening, you did. Did you start finding an interest in science and uh, uh, ufology, things like that? Some kind of yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I I've always been into painting and art, so I've always kind of like studied, gone to college, things like that. And then I like reading scientific papers. Um, and then yeah, I mean, I just I watch everything. You know, read everything. I mean, a lot of stuff is rubbish. You can just throw it out the window. You know, that's just, you know, garbage. <laughs> but other, other things you think, well, hold on, that actually has an element of possible truth to it. You know, at least do some more digging and then you go down the rabbit hole and then you, you go exactly. deeper. <laughs> exactly. So we have a, 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 a person out there that's commenting this. I can't see who you are, but it says, uh, my mother witnessed a UFO back in 62 through 64. I was a small child. He says, uh, now she's, a, it's my husband and I witnessed a UFO in our backyard hovering not far from, uh, from him in 2022. So, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of freaky, but I wish you could have got video or photo of that. That would have been nice to see, you know. Even if you have, send it to me. I want, you know, I want people to see that, you know. And, and you know, that's what we're we're trying to do here, you know. Um, even if you're in a group or a Facebook group or any kind of group like that, you know, please leave it open to share with folks or whatever you see. Like our page, I know it's not it's not a public group, but we try to break down videos first and photos before we start sharing them out there. So, and we use, and we just like copy, paste and throw them out there as soon as we, we find the answer to what it is. Sometimes we can't find all the answers, right? Um, and how do you, how do you break things down to where it's like, you're saying, man, I wish I had the answer to this. You know, do do you feel that way as well? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It really is because it's like, I mean, what would be great is if ufologists around the world can get together and analyze everything together and actually start finding the pieces, the missing pieces. You know, we can't always get disclosure through our governments. So we've got to now come together and find a way to unite and find disclosure through the people. And I, I think it's a way we need to go. We need to move forward in a different way. Um, I'm all up for for helping with disclosure, um, you know, for recording UFOs live. So if you see it, you sense it, you feel it, record it. You know, I recommend that to everyone. You know, if you see something you're not sure about, just record it, video yeah. it. And that's why we're called citizen ufologists or just citizens in general that are, they want disclosure and they want to find out exactly what's out there you know um and and uh you know we, we always try to break things down together and we we love working with other other folks other ufologists you know uh, it's kind of hard right have you ever seen like physics scientists together in one room 
It's crazy <laughs> because they're bumping heads on who's right and who's wrong, who's right and who's wrong. Now, us as ufologists, we're like, okay, come on, I'm going to show you this. What do you think? Well, it might be this, might be that. Okay, well, we can we can go with that, right? Whatever. You keep an open mind. We always say keep an open mind, right? Because we're trying to figure yeah. it out. And then once we put it together, say, you know what? Yeah, that, that, I, that's a real one, or that's true. That's what it is. You know, uh, that's the that's the difference of working together. It's like I often say to Annabelle, I said, Let, let's try a different method. Let's try uh, using frequencies while trying to communicate with them. Let's experiment. It's all about finding the boundaries, you know, discovering new ways of being able to see them, detect them, sense them. You know, it's all about you've got to be open to be able to push the boundaries to find, you know, a the spiritual side, the scientific side, you need all elements and aspects to create the whole picture. Right. Right. And and that's true. Uh, you know, uh, we have Alex Smith there. He's from the UK. Well, I don't know. Have you seen his, his photos? Oh my God. They're awesome. Uh, you need to follow him and see his photos if you haven't. But he says, uh, if we die, if we die and become spirits, I think perhaps they will be in the same dimension of the other intelligent entities. But the, if the entities have technology to come into our dimensions and other dimensions easily, where else? Let's see. The spirits can maybe dip back into this dimension briefly at times, depending on the certain conditions. Just a theory, he's saying. So, you know, uh, I guess he's he's just very short to watch what, what we talked about earlier and and you know way it's a possibility right you know that it's it could be happening that way right yep uh yeah. on that quote is that always trust your peripheral vision that's right yeah. you, you often see things moving in your corner of your eyes trust it because it's i guarantee it's going to be something to do with them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they move quickly <laughs> yeah <laughs> so Adi Ball says one more question is uh you may want to ask Karen about the white van. Okay, let's what's happening with the white van. White van. I remember what that is. White van. Somebody <laughs> you might have to remind me Annabelle. <laughs> Somebody must have been following you or something. Uh uh, oh, I've had that. <laughs> have you ever felt like uh, you know, because of what you're doing, people are kind of uh maybe, you know. Big Brother kind of looking at you a different way or something? Oh, or? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You find you get yourself shadow banned a lot. I've been followed, you know. There's always that sense that something is... You're feeling like you're watched. <laughs> they know. <laughs> Everyone knows. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, and, and it's like in, in the middle of our podcast, sometimes they just it just dies or glitches or whatever, you know, or uh, I had one you where just... Your, your phone, where, it, where I'm on my phone and it, it, you hear a, a click noise and then it's like, um, it's almost like alien voices in the background. It's really yeah. weird. I've had that a few times. Yeah, that's... I, and I think they're just kind of checking out what you're doing. But, you know, I, I, me personally, I don't think that <laughs> I, I can't say this for sure, but I don't think they put you in the ground anymore for talking about aliens. I just think that, you know, because there's so much of it out there. And, you know, there's thousands of podcasts now, you know, uh, talking about extraterrestrials, just like this one. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> what are they going to do? You know, it's just. It doesn't make any sense, right? Now NASA's getting involved. Now all these big old industries are getting Disclosure. involved. Disclosure. They want to know. We want to know. But yet they're blacking out everything on Mars. And everything. <laughs> we want to know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just think it's a formality that they're doing because they just want to say, let's just hypothesize this just for a second. What if somebody has more photos or videos from NASA and it says NASA on it, you know, and it's blacked out and they have both versions. So that way they can say, we don't know anything about this. <laughs> we just started uh, doing this ourselves. You, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of like they're covering themselves with uh, that blanket, you know, as far as like, you know, of what's happening out there. You know, it's, you can't cover it up anymore. It's, it's, no. like, you know, we're, we're they're building stronger telescopes here on the ground that you as a civilian can buy. You know, yeah. and you see these things. 
yeah, technology is a lot better now. You know, it's harder to to hide that kind of thing. I mean, obviously, I don't think they'll ever disclose everything. I don't know if they can. Um, so I think it's down to the people, yep. you know, to gather the evidence. You know, I I don't think everyone's uh, – not everyone's going to believe. You know, there's always going to be those who question, doubt, and that's fine. Everyone's allowed to have their opinion. Exactly. You know, it's what makes it – beautiful we can have these debates and discussions um but yeah i think that's what we need to do get together and and share our information exactly and And that's what we try to do to hear with alien strand podcast but let's go ahead we're already coming to the end of our show we went a little lengthy but it's okay it was a great conversation uh is there anything that you would like to uh, tell anybody out there uh you know in in audio and video land yeah, I mean, we have some great groups on Facebook. Feel free to, you know, if you've had any experiences, if you want to join the groups, you know, we're here to help. Um, great team, me, Laurie, Annabelle, Jody, and many, many more. Um, so great team. We can help wherever we can. And which groups are those? Um, so you've got the CE4, um, you've got the frequencies. Um, we've got a new group that's um, just come out. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few. I can send you the links so you can share them. Um, yeah, for people. Yeah, please. yeah. So everything that we're doing here today, there's going to be a bunch of links on the audio podcast and on the video as well. So just, uh, if you can send those to me and I'll link them all up there so people can find you and they can talk to you as well. Now, do, do you do you have like one-on-one uh, discussions with people as well? You know, they're going through something. Oh yeah. I mean, the people are more than welcome to, you know, message me on Messenger, you know, if they don't want to speak on a group. Um, so you can find me on Facebook under right. Karen Pratt. Um, but yeah, I'm there to help anyone who's in need. Good, good. Well, thank you uh, for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. And thank you for reaching out to me today. Uh, I mean, last week, you know, because I thought it was important for you to get on. And I know we have two different time zones. It's probably pretty late over there already in the uk but uh you know you you sacrificed your little bit of time so you can come on here and tell people this story. And it's I just, the weekend it's fine <laughs> no, <laughs> thank you for having me and and for everything that you do all of you everyone you know amazing amazing group of people Yes, it is. And we love what we do. And we love to help folks out there uh, just like you and just like what you're doing today. So, again, thank you for being on the show today. And uh, everybody out there is just watching today. And they just they thank you for for doing what you're doing, uh, Karen. And, you know, it's just it's hard to do it sometimes. But I think you have to in order to get it off your chest a little bit. You'll feel a little bit better. You'll sleep a little bit better, too. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you don't really talk to people about these things that happen to, you know, I'll, I'll speak on Messenger, I'll help other people, but you kind of don't really think about yourself too much and what you go through and what's happening. So, yeah, no, it's good to good to talk. <laughs> yes, yes, good to talk. All right. Uh, so uh, if, if you can, just uh, stay on, but I'm going to take I'm gonna pull you off here just a second. But thank you for being on the show today. Uh, like I said, everybody just enjoyed all your content and everything that you had to say. They're praising you all over these. Uh, you, you'll be able to play it back when you do. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for being on the show today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All righty. We'll, we'll catch you here in a bit. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. You know, like I did, it was awesome, awesome. You know, uh, I know it was kind of early for folks, but, you know, it's five o'clock here is 11 o'clock over there in the UK. So, you know, uh, we we try to make it to where we're not getting in, you know, at 12 or one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning because, you know, people got to sleep, got to sleep. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for everybody chiming in on the show. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this and uh, giving you guys disclosure. This is part of disclosure, you know, because she's telling her story of what she saw. I just said she's got the video proof. She's got the photo proof. She's got everything uh, that we showed today. And, you know, if you're hearing this podcast, you know, we're going to be on 26, 27 platforms. Uh, ask Alexa. We're on iHeartRadio, Spotify, you know, Google. We're on iPhone app. If you got a podcast on your iPhone, we'll be on there. You know, ask Alexa. She'll play Alien Strand, you know. 
now we're uh, we were live on eight platforms today thank you guys for hearing us uh, ramble a little bit today uh, actually me not her you know but you know she did an amazing job and uh, I, I hope you guys got some information and some insights and if you want to contact her I will definitely put links to the uh, to her, her 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 thing so you can get a hold of her and and then we you can talk to her one on one because I think that's a good idea you know for folks when they come on the show to talk to the folks one on one like she said sometimes you don't want to you know be on a public group and talk about it you know it's best to go one on one and she'll be glad to to help you guys out as well as we do at Alien Strand Disclosure Project so don't forget to catch us there on Alien Strand Disclosure Project if you ever want to join us uh, please. Go to asdpufo-dot-com or go to alienstrand.com, our sister page, and it'll it'll you can jump over to page to page uh, if you want to be a representative of Alien Strand Disclosure Project. And you know what? Like I said before, you know, uh, on on our page, what we do is we get uh, information of sightings, things like that, and we we get reports, and then we we post them on our website, so that way you get uh, people out there can get all the new stuff that's happening out there today as an actual report. Okay, so you know you can always we, we have an app now for it. You don't even have to write nothing down anymore. It's so simple. You know, you do the report, send it to me, bam, I get it, I make a report. So anyway. Thank you guys for watching the show today. I really appreciate you guys. You know, uh, thank you for all the comments, everything. Please share this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, X, anything, hit us a like, subscribe, you know, uh, just keep on because, oh, next week on Wednesday, I will have another podcast. Uh, I'm going to have another gentleman on. Um, he actually got abducted uh, a few times there in Alaska. So he has, and it really, it's intense, man. So you guys really got to hear his story. So Check that out next week, next Wednesday. Watch that uh, when it comes out, uh, and I'll throw out the flyers, okay? Until then, you know, you guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening.